All right, you are still watching Ways now to raise awareness about the significance of sign language. The International Day of Sign Languages is marked every year on the 23rd of September. This day provides us with the opportunity to support the linguistics and cultural identity of deaf people and other individuals who use sign languages. Now, this is interesting. 2020. <laughs> that was interesting. You know. Ah, uh, did you ever practice sign languages? No, but I've had to learn about it. Um, but I wasn't very successful. I'm not very good at languages. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, whether it's the the spoken or the unspoken kind. Um, but I think I remember. So it's funny how we've come around, right? Mm -hmm. I remember us talking about this day last year. Just like and, that. Uh, yep. Yeah, one year is over. Your one year is gone. <laughs> And you and know what? has changed mm, in that direction. And I'm going to say exactly what I said back then. And I said, well, the one thing I know is that there's a different sign language. So there's American Sign Language and there's British Sign Language. I know that much. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's that sign language. The, did you watch that funny video where she was trying to. <laughs> one interpreter was trying to interpret something somebody. That video went viral. I can't even remember. But it was just so funny. The way she was trying to interpret what the person was saying mm. but hey um i learned it because we had a lot of deaf guys deaf and dumb guys actually mm -hmm. that lived in a neighbor's house they mm -hmm. were he used to groom them he used to like train them take them right. to farm different things and all of that vocational skills and all of mm. that so because of that for us we were to communicate with them you know you do all of the, the major i've even forgotten mm. it, but i used to do that you know i think language uh, um sign language is like any other language mm. if you don't practice it as often as possible you forget you lose the, yeah. the language Mm -hmm. I didn't have that opportunity to learn sign language, but whenever I see it, I'm interested. Mm. Especially the I love you yeah. part or something. Oh, I mean, I There's no, a way they... no, no recollection. <laughs> I've forgotten. But, yeah. but I know I used to do it. I used to. <laughs> In the other so it's time to get back. One yeah. year on. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Nama, let me go with you first. What did you find for us All in the right. News? So Hong Kong removes international travel quarantine after months or after more than two years, rather. The story has it that the Hong Kong government has announced the ending of formal quarantine for international travelers after more than two and a half years of very stringent pandemic controls. Under new rules, it will take effect from the 26th and uh, incoming travelers will be required to undergo just three days of self-monitoring on arrival. So on, uh, Hong Kong is one of the the um, hubs when it comes to travel and experience. And uh, because of the COVID crisis, they had had to lock down and put in very strict measures because of the COVID. And um, two years or two and a half years on, they found that I'm sure they are realizing that the world is moving on. Mm. Some of these other countries who had also placed their, their bands uh, have fast opened up their borders mm. and people have started moving currency and all everything is moving on so if they continued in that light they were probably going to lose their place as one of the hot spots uh, when it comes to travel when it comes mm. to business and all and then they have started looking into it and this is one of the major recent breakthroughs so mm. people don't have to go through i think before it used to be up to 21 days mm -hmm. or so and then if for any <laughs> reason you test positive mm. you're going to go through the camp and army quarters or, you know, mm. it was really tough for people who were traveling at the time so i think this would probably be good news for people whose mm. um, direction uh, destination is towards asia at least they don't have to go through the rigorous, uh, yeah. stringent uh, protocols yeah. and all. So it's a good one. Amazing and how COVID has fast become a memory. Mm. So, I mean, uh, driving around on Tuesday, I had to go to a couple of medical facilities and I kept seeing the COVID um, sign, sign like, yeah. the, you know, the collection mm -hmm. centers outside. And there's one lone guy sat there just like <laughs> half asleep, tired. nothing to do. Uh, so it's amazing how, yeah, two years on and... A few months ago, like there was long memory. queues of yeah. people trying to get tests done, especially if you were traveling out of the country. But Thankfully, yes, that's how times. quickly 
Yeah. We can forget. Well, we the thank God. Thing in thank life is change. What? We thank God that is behind us. That's <laughs> all. That, that's all we can say. All right. Yeah. So, what's your story? Ladies, I wish I had a better story, but uh. um, this is fast becoming the norm in Lagos State. Sadly. Uh, my headline reads, another building collapses in Lagos, oh. rescue operation ongoing. So this um, occurred sometime around noon today. Uh, a three-story building uh, on Shonoga Street, Palm Avenue in Mushi um, area of Lagos State collapsed. The, um, I, I just had a follow-up to the story saying that two people had been rescued, uh, an adult and a child. And um, they're still trying to, of course, sort through the rubble to see if they'll find any um, more survivors um, and indeed you know anybody's as the case may be. I haven't seen anything to confirm if they know sort of how many people were in the building at the time of the collapse um, but this is just sad. This is coming on just a few weeks after the seven-story building um, collapsed in Oniru where we then had the commissioner of was it physical planning um, Idris Alako who resigned so I mean, we keep seeing these things. We're seeing new buildings collapsing, old buildings collapsing. I keep asking myself what's going on because, I mean, this is the whole rainy season. I mean, we don't get earthquakes or things like that in Nigeria. So I just wonder what could be triggering so many um, of these building collapses because this is not a new building. This is an old building. Why now? Um, but... We thank well, you God know, the, the challenge with this kind of building, if they can put up that video again so mm. you'd see it, right? Because I know that some of those structures were initially built to be probably a one floor or two floor max mm. structure. Over the years, you didn't see landlords adding on, added on extra, mm. extra floors on those properties. So, you see, again, this is the when we talk about lawlessness mm. and we talk about, you know, the consequences that because there are no consequences, people mm. just do everything as they like. And eventually these are the, the outcomes that you mm -hmm. get. Because mm -hmm. if you look at that structure, you would realize that I, I can bet you for free that it was not the initial plan, right? Mm. Something went, uh, somebody looked away and allow certain people to add on some, some structures mm -hmm. to that property. Or even if it's the initial plan, we don't even have me a me maintenance, maintenance culture, culture. In, in Nigeria. So if the building was made to be inhabited by, say, five to ten people, and then over time, people are population in increases, you now have mm -hmm. 50 people mm -hmm. putting pressure on that building. It's only a matter of time and the inevitable will happen. Mm. So we don't, like you rightly said, we don't have, you know, people that are, are given the responsibility to ensure that these things are implemented. Where they go around abroad, you see that they will make sure that the number of people that are supposed to be in a particular apartment or a building are the number of people. And if people find out things, they're going to report and people are going to come to check just to mm. be sure. So they're very strict with these policies and they mm. implement them. But here, it's uh, mm. somebody looking the other way. You know that and of course, that integrity. look at the lives that have been lost mm -hmm. in the process mm -hmm. of uh, neglect. Okay, quickly, mm. YouTube says, um, uh, I have changed career. <laughs> Content creators, artists earned over $50 billion dollars in three years why are you surprised hell my sister so you it? just you're making money on the content. table because you like you to understand? create content i create content but i'm not making money for you though <laughs> <laughs> so but i mean people are i think i saw uh an article a few weeks ago mm. so cabby is, is his name yeah cabby yes, so so cabby is making seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a post people yes one just post. for doing one post just for doing like this <laughs> Chimo. So and interestingly, Kabi started gaining during COVID. traction yes. during the pandemic. Yes, he COVID. started during COVID. The guy was was a, 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 a what's the called thing? Forklift truck driver mm. before that. So, boy, yeah. So at the inaugural made on YouTube event, YouTube shared that it's expanding the platform's monetization system. Mm. That the YouTube partner program, that's YPP, to allow more creators to join that program, introducing new ways for content creators to earn revenue through shorts and re-imagining re, um, the music, um, music industry and creator dynamics by opening up ads monetization for those who feature 
um, music in their videos. Long and short, go on Nera Metrics because a lot of young people are creating content. Long and short, go, go on Nera Metrics and see what this entails. It means that anybody can earn money. And you don't have to do crazy things. If you are educational, if your content is to teach people, you know, you can still go ahead, teach That's people. Awesome. Yes. Mm. So, so I'm just saying that everything you do now, look at Kiki, for instance. We took a story yesterday, yes. uh, unveiling of her, what's it called? Her baby, her baby bump. A, a baby bump, right? She understands content so well. Even the baby, baby shower was content. So you will watch the small clip, they tell you, go to YouTube to watch the full clip. Do you understand? So now everybody's understanding it. She's already opened a, 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 a page for the child. For the child. You know, so the child is going to be managing it. So everything for, already made for content creators like us is content. So you cannot, so, and you can't say because I'm not a, I'm not gra, -gra like, mm. oh, I don't like know how to dance and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying yes, that there there's is content a place for, for everyone. Every there's a place for everyone. So we need I to start looking, because we're we are thinking alternative sources of income. We're yeah. thinking uh, multiple streams of income. We're thinking Revenue earning new generation, forex. yeah. We're, yeah, we're thinking earning in Forex. These are the ways. So don't say I'm not telling you something. No. <laughs> I'm telling you now. So, Meet Uwa, I'll tell you what to do. I'll look at your personality and create a content for you. Don't worry. It's, we make this money together. <laughs> it's really important that mm. people... So sometimes, so I don't live in a place of regret, but I remember when YouTube first started, sometime in... When it started to gain popularity, sometime in 2011, so around the time where... No, it wasn't even 2011, yeah. About 2010, 2011... I remember watching, starting to get into YouTube then and watching YouTube videos. And, you know, I'm naturally curious. So I kind of Googled this YPP thing mm -hmm. and I thought, mm. like I tried to record my first video back then and I was just like, oh, this is a lot of work. <laughs> and I was like, please, I have a day job. I have enough to do. And I just moved on. I just thought to myself. Imagine. Like, you know, there's a, what's that lady now? Jackie Aino. Mm -hmm. mm. When I first started watching Jack, Jackie on YouTube, Jackie was still a soldier. She was living in Iraq. Yeah, either she was, yeah, she was living in Baghdad, I think it was. And she started shooting her videos. So she used to do her videos in her army uniform and all of that. Today, Jackie has brands. Jackie <laughs> has a brand. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then she has brands. So it's interesting All why I took YouTube. this topic because we're talking career transitioning. Your career might just be content creation. Mm -hmm. You just don't know it yet <laughs> because they say career for the future. So we go on a break. When we come back from the break, we'll have our guest with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back.